there comes a time in every customer's life where they look at a rendering or research and they sort of say, how do I do that? This is one of those moments. Unraveling the secrets of the Renaissance sleeve is pretty much a painful experience. I'm not sure exactly why, but sleeves are notorious for being the most challenging, no matter what era you're working on. And 16th century does not disappoint. Most times, we are using our best knowledge, guessing, and some historical archaeology plus just physics to understand what seems so easy that many customers, including me, have put this step to the very end only to end up in sleeval hell. Why are they so hard? What's real? What's false? Is that separate? Is it sewn in? You tell me! I don't even know who I am in this relationship anymore. And then much frustration and exhaustion ensues. Sleeves are put in at least twice backwards. There is some strange dimension that keeps fooling you into thinking this time you have it right, only for it to laugh at you with the elbows pointing forwards. So I decided instead of doing the skirt next, I would try to tackle sleeves instead, while I still had enough energy and motivation to get through this grueling process. Wish me luck. In order to understand things though, as usual, let's head to the research and some of the examples I've already made. My first project was the Veronese and the first sleeve I ever made was actually sewn into my doublet. And you can see here that I made little ruffs that I then just whipped inside, which they could then be removed and starched and cleaned. My second was actually the Eleonora de Toledo pink gown from like the 1540s. This one was a challenge for real. It's actually the sleeve itself cut into pieces, the pattern cut to pieces. Each piece is finished off with binding and then stitched back together and then these are called points. So tons of pearls and embroidery and then this part up here, hoof part, I attached it and then <laughs> pulled it around and stitched it on here and then hid it inside the lining. And then the sleeves are tied with silk ribbons that are attached to both the sleeve and the shoulder strap. The next one, it's from a sketch that's in Moore's Italiae, where the sleeves are like really poofy. I decided the stuff that you're seeing, the pullings out, sometimes people think is the camicia or the shift underneath. I think it's false and I think it's built into the sleeve and then also with the rough attached for taking out later and washing. The only question is though, it's like, okay, but how would they wash this? And I don't know. Is it a great hypothesis? Not really, but like, we're all just true on our best, right? I attached them with buttons, which you definitely see buttons and then like a loop on the shoulder straps. I have so many sleeves. And then on the gold gown that I just made recently, recently, like last year, was again, this is false. It's false. It's false linen stitched in there to make it look like it's coming out somehow. Because you look at some of these paintings and you're like, there's no way. There's no way with all the layers here that that's actually their shift underneath. And then also because hook and eyes actually existed, hooks and eyes are your friend and they are totally things they use. I use them on the inside and then I actually put all the ouches and all of the things that are decorative. I kind of quick rigged it. This by far, my favorite. For the end, what I actually did is I actually used the kimicha and then flipped it up around it and it looks great. I'm not saying they did that all the time. Never say that I did that all the time. Is it feasible? Yes. And then finally, this is the doublet that I just made from my last project. And I just wanted to show the buttons. Very common for this time period. There's definitely like a whole row of them. That I definitely know is gonna be in the sleeve. But the real question that I have right now, how the heck did they make that ruffle? Because that's my biggest question. In order to do that, I'm going to have to put a sleeve on the dress form and just sort of try to figure it out because I really still am like baffled. Sometimes you just need to look at something in 3D space to start to understand it. I just wasn't getting this for some reason. And so you stare at it, and you stare at it, and then you go, oh, of course. Well, that was obvious. Here is the exact moment where I figured out what I could actually do. What if the ruffle was built into the sleeve? or tacked to the inside in case you needed to do laundry, between the lining and the fashion fabric. If I can get this right, it should allow me to still use ties or any kind of closure I want, like hook and eye, but also be able to take the rough out and do the necessary laundering and starching. And so you think you have it all sorted out. Easy peasy. But you do not in fact have it sorted out because these are sleevels. As you sit with your brain starts to ask questions like, 
What if they just tied them on? Do I even want to do that? Should I add a poof at the top? Will that keep the rough standing? Is starch enough? If the band is too wide, how will I attach it and still have hooks and ties? Would they really take off the ties or hooks every time they needed to launder and starch them? Is that really practical? And so you go further into the rabbit hole, looking at every sleeve you can find, hoping Vicelio left a clue, but it's pointless. So you take a break, figure out what you do know, and go make some buttons. There are 12 on this lady's sleeves. Let's go do that. So once I had cleared my mind with focusing on making 12 buttons, I had enough courage to make the base of the sleeve. I decided on the bent elbow version of the sleeves from this time period. Then all I was needed was to cut from the fashion fabric and the lining, making sure that the pattern was the same for both arms. I marked both where the opening should start for the loops and buttons. Then I simply sewed the top and bottom together for both, turned the lining inside out, and stitched it to the inside. I left the gap open for where the buttons would go. To be extra fancy, I finger loop braided the cording for the loops. To avoid fraying, I did not cut them, but stitched them like this. And voila, a sleeve! Of course, as it is with classic sleeval energy, I stitched the loops and buttons to the wrong sides of the gap. And I am not going to move them. It would require making six more buttons, and I'm definitely done with that for now. So, it's a tradition. I can't have a sleeve that is exactly right. I can't decide yet if I want to pin them to the straps, but my inclination is to try hooks and eyes this time, with the eyes sewn on top of the strap. Many of these portraits show very thin, if not very visible, straps, and this makes a lot of sense to me. Now the only thing left to do is make the shoulder ruffle, which I think we will leave for next time. There is a lot of stitching and starching involved, and I need to get that done first. The only thing to fear about sleevels is the fear of sleevels, and an overactive mind. But you can overcome them, mostly by just choosing something already. Take care, my salty possums. I'll see you next time.